Now, I've got to go and pick these up from Bridgewater, but I bought a 2011 uh, Toyota Igo with 70,000 miles on it. Um, does need an MOT on it. It's a 2012. I've bought 120,000 mile Hyundai i10 Classic that also needs an MOT. Or it's, oh, they've both got MOT on them, but it's too short for me to retail with the MOT that's left on them. 2010. Now, I did snag this for £500, including fees. Uh, I already started advertising. I use these images to start advertising the cars even before they get to me. And I've already started having messages on it. Adver We're heading up to Bridgewater to pick up the i20 Hyundai and the Toyota iGo. I think I'm going to drive the i20 back because it's uh, got the higher mileage, so it doesn't matter putting the miles on it. But I must have, I reckon, six, seven messages in my inbox for people who want to see it as soon as I've got it in stock because I put it up for £1,500, which obviously sounds like it might have been too cheap. But we need to find out whether what it needs for MOT-wise. Um, it had a really good service history and it had a bit of MOT on it. So if I drive it back, by the time I get back two hours, we'll know whether it's going to be okay for somebody or not. Obviously, you'll still have to go for an MOT and get safety checks. But um, I'll have a good idea and I can let people view it straight away down on the basis that I'm going to then MOT it. Um, but obviously, I might decide that price point's too low. So anyway, when we're at Bridgewater, we'll have a little walk around the cars before we uh, head off in them and see how we get on. So we've got the keys for both the cars here at Bridgewater. First up, a little i10. Looks fairly tidy. So we'll get in, get it started, check the fluids, because this is the one I think I want to drive back. The bonnet open a bit dusty. Just check it's got oil. Plenty of oil overfill, if anything. So I'll have a look at that later on. Uh, these, I think the coolant. Where's the coolant here? It's up here, isn't it? On these ones. Let's check it's got coolant. That looks like it might be a bit dry. Hold on, that's down here. I can see it. Yeah, we're okay for coolant. Battery's a bit crusty. So next up, now we know we've got fluids, is uh, let's give her a go at starting her. I'll we'll get the fluid coolant cap back on again, for goodness sake. So let's try giving it a start. Yeah, he's straight up clean inside here. God, that engine sounds sweet as a nut, to be fair. Yeah, that's sweet as a nut. So we'll drive this one back. Let's go and have a quick look at the Toyota. So here's the iGo. We knew it had some damage. Front bumpers off here. So I've got a little bit of work to get done there. But other than that, she looks pretty tidy. Is that a crease in the wing? Might be it needs a front wing. Alloys definitely need refurb. So we've got a little bit of repair work to do on this one. Let's um, check if she starts. So inside here is all right. I think it seems as it should be. Uh, let's check the fluids before we start her up. Where's it on these ones down here in there? So we'll look at the fluids. Wow, super clean engine bay. Super clean engine bay. Little bit low on oil. It's enough to get it on the trailer, but we'll need to do a service when we get it back. Uh, cool, and it's a little low, but not outrageous. So it's got enough to get it started and get it on the ramp. Let's get it, get it started. So start up. On the button, 70,000 money uh, miles. 70,000 money, I'm already thinking about money. 70,000 miles, she's running. Both cars have got a service history. I'm gonna go through that when we get back to the unit. I don't wanna hold Adrian up too much. Um, we'll go through that when we get back, but both have a good service history as far as I'm aware. Yeah. That is running sweet as a nut. I can't believe how clean this engine bay is. Everything's really clean. 
No weeps anywhere by looks of it from anything. She's running happily, so we'll get her loaded up. I'm gonna get in the um, I-10 and we'll get driving her back. She's just strapping the I-Go down. I've driven it on the ramps for a quick of a little look. We've got a service book here with service 2014, uh, 13, 14, another one late 14, 15, uh, 17, 19. So not full, but not bad. Uh, how many owners does it add? I've got another key for it here. I've got all the handbooks here. Which is a nice bonus. So it looks like, again, it's a win where um, it's about the bodywork. It needs that front bumper, possibly a wing doing. Um, might be cheaper for me to try and find um, our ones in the same colour already because, uh, you know, we've already gone through that before. I mean, it'll be quicker. So how many owners has this had? Uh, it has had three owners. So low ownership, really, for one of these because they're normally first-time cars get go through a few owners. Inside is clean. Outside it's clean apart from that bumper and like I say she starts on the button I've left her sitting running no smoke and anything like that. So this one's gonna get trailer back um, I have already got uh, Like I said, I've had another message while we've been traveling up here on the i10 I've got loads of people want to see it this afternoon might have undersold that a little bit um, Especially when it's so sweet, but so we're gonna race back in the i10 get it valeted by the guys across the road. I'll just get them to valet it quickly and get people coming and seeing it on the basis that I want to put the MOT on it, see if we can't get it sold within the day. So uh, I'm in a little uh, I-10. Oh, it starts on a button now. Beautiful. Uh, it's a really nice place to be actually inside here. Yeah, it's not fancy, but it just smells nice and it's really clean. Um, I didn't think Classics had air con, so we'll give that a go a bit later on and see if the air con's doing much. But now for the moment, I'm just going to get up behind uh, Adrian and we'll have a, I've got half a tank of fuel, I think that should be enough to get me back. And let's say get straight around the Valeters and see if we can't get some people viewing this afternoon. So we're off the motorway now and the little i10 has been performing absolutely perfectly. The gearbox is smooth, the brakes are great, the engine is super quiet and it hums along. Um, I've been doing the uh, national speed limit all the way without a problem. Temperature stayed exactly where it should be. Only problem I've found so far is the heater control is not redirecting the air through the vents. So I need to get back and check on YouTube what a common cause for that is. Hopefully it's uh, not too hard to get to underneath the dash. But um, brilliant little car, I've been zipping along. Only used a marginal amount of fuel. So let's get back to the unit and then give it a proper look over. So I-10's over the Valeters, here's the I-Go, let's have a quick look at it now, we've got it off the trailer. Scuffed up wheel there so we'll have to be spraying that. And scuffed up wheel there so we'll be spraying that, so we'll be spraying the front wheels, possibly the back ones as well, to make them all match. But they're nice wide spoke, they're not hard to prep and spray those. Body work wise, we're all good down here until we get to here where the wings had a, a bend in bent in there and the bumpers come off and some overspray there and some sanding marks so someone's done a bit of work on that before headlight looks like it'll be alright though it should go again so probably get a wing uh, probably save the bumper because it's just scuffed here and here and that's popped out I think the bumper will be alright to go again so just get a wing save myself some time there a bit like uh, I did one the other day where I did a wing didn't I was that a C1 um, I say and do the wheels up inside. Oh, so we've got the service book here. Uh, we've got all the other books. Got the locking wheel nuts, thank goodness. Interior is in good nick. I think we'll be alright with this one. So just a little bit of body working stuff to do. Now I think all in, this owes me 1600, 1700, I'll have to check. Book for it's 2995. Um, obviously we want to do it a bit lower than that, so for a quick sale. So hopefully, I've got to put an MOT on it, I've got to do these bits and bobs. I'll probably end up spending around 400 pound on it, so I'll be in it for 2K. So maybe 2795, something like that, quick for a quick sale. Do a little service on it. This is booked in for an MOT, I'd already booked it in for an MOT today. 
with uh, car care. So I'm gonna get straight in and find out what's wrong with it. Obviously we're gonna get an advisory straight away for insecure bumper, that's a given. But um, I wanna know straight away what we need to do to get it for an MOT and then we'll get the I-10 in after that. Right, we hadn't driven the I-Go, so let's have a quick run around the block and just check we can get all gears and our clutch is all right. So, yeah, go through the gears all right, they're fine. Got a little knock or something, strange noise underneath, which will no doubt pick up in the uh, MOT, probably a bit of a loose exhaust or something, or a, sh or a shock's gone. But anyway, that's enough to check that it's still driving. So we're letting the eye go idle for a bit. Just check uh, there's no smoke or anything. Run it a bit longer. Uh, I-10, no previous owners. It's a one owner car. So that Hyundai I-10 I just drove back is a one owner car. How cool is that? And let's have a look at service history. So we've got services on 2010, 2018. I thought we said have more service than this. Oh, that's a bit disappointing. Not a lot with the history on it. Well, I'm sure it didn't make this age with this miles without actually being serviced more regularly than that. So I think a phone call to the dealer is in order there. But yeah, one owner car, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Someone's coming at two for that one, so it's, let's say, it's over at the Valitors. So um, I'm going to sell it as is with the heater fault, I think, for the, for the 1500. Um, if they want the heater fault fixing, as well as having a new MOT on it, then I think they're going to have to pay a bit more, but we'll see how we get on. So it's got an MOT valid till 31st of January 2022. Um, last MOT, it just had an advisement on uh, brakes. This is the I-10, advisement on the brake side of things. So I'm not sure why I said I was going to put a new MOT on this one. To be fair, it's got six months. I think that's enough, actually. Um, so like I say, in my may say it's either or, a new MOT and fix the heater, or uh, fix the heater and leave the MOT that's on it. That might be where we are with it. I've been teaching Pete how to do uh, V6 Alfa Romeo engines, which are, you know, these, these are the probably the easiest cam belt you can do. Pete's making a right pig's ear of it and taking forever on it. Um, I mean, what? look at this, you've got a full inch between the side of the uh, chassis leg and the belts, you know, you can get the end of your fingertips in there so i don't know what the fuss is all about and you've only got to take off the plenum the rocker covers everything else just to be able to get to lock the cam so yeah he's really making a meal out of it but um i shall give him an assessment at the end and, and let him know how i feel he's done i mean obviously the question with pete is do i keep him on you know this kind of this kind of work is this the kind of thing i want so uh yeah i'll we'll have to have a good long hard think about whether i want to keep pete on or not with this the, the poor work ethics he's got <laughs> yeah, comment down below below what do we um what do we think pete a keeper or not i mean he is getting on a little bit now as well so we have to appreciate that so yeah pete keeper or not <laughs> bless him back from the Valators. They've done a beautiful job. Actually, a bit dirt there. Um, but overall, it's pretty cracking. So look what they did under the engine bay. I asked them to give that little spruce up for me. Right, get my hands in there. There we go. I'm gonna give it a basic clean off. Might get some shiny stuff on there in a second. Just do the finishing touches on it. Could do with some new windscreen wipers, they're a bit rusty and horrible. But yeah, overall, come up alright. Bodywork I'm gonna have a go at is I'm gonna see if I can't improve this at all. Uh, I'm gonna compound it first. And then see if I can touch in a bit to make it look a little bit better. It's the only thing I think I'm going to do. Gave it a quick buff, didn't do a massive amount. I've got some of this um, black ceramic uh, wax from... Who's the turtle? I forget who the turtle are called now. I forget what they're called now anyway. But um, yeah, turtle wax. That's it. <laughs> I used this before and it's actually worked quite well. So you put it on and it's actually got black in it. So if I put that on leave it for a minute 
and we'll wipe it off and see if that does anything better in terms of uh, in terms of getting some of the scratches out. Again, I'm not going to go overboard with this. It's going to be a cheap car. Um, for the money, I still think it's it's great value for money. So we'll leave this. Actually, I won't leave it too much. It's running. Let's get it quite wipe over. I just want it to settle in some of the scratches a little bit first. I actually find this stuff pretty good as a general rule. I found it pretty good, but my I'll probably go in here with um, some just plain gloss black and tart this up a little bit. Let's have a look. That's a bit better. It doesn't play nicely with the wax the boys used over at the valet in place. I'll have to get some of that off. But yeah, certainly the rear court was less obvious with the scratches now. I say we'll get some gloss black and just touch that in there, I think. With a little brush. Let's get this off. Right. Let's go and get some gloss black and do that. I've got to control myself and make sure I don't get crazy fixing this up. So you've got some plain gloss back, put it in the lid of the paint. I like to let it sit for a minute or two, let it get a little bit thicker, and then just dab it on just gonna run down this scratch on the arch here I'm trying to basically just draw the eye away a little bit from it you're not trying to fix it really because that's not realistic without sanding it down and spraying it so we're just dabbing in these little bits here you see it just draws the eye away from it straight away and that's what we're looking to do. Don't load your brush up too much like I just have done there. If it does, dry it out a little bit and then spread it out thinly again. See it's improving. I'm back here, you can't really see it. There we go. This answers your question guys as well, as well. I like using 1K paints because I can leave them sitting around and just use little bits at a time rather than having to use all the can in one go with 2K. I'll just follow that scratch along there a little bit. And on here. Dragging it along. Look at it, it helps when you leave it to thicken a little bit. But there we go. Let's get stuck on the edge here. Looks like a whole, whole lot smarter, doesn't it? So it's just now as you walk by, your eyes aren't drawn straight away to that bit of damage there we'll have a quick wander around and see if there's anything else like that that we can get easily here we go it's here now ideally because this has just been waxed I should be using some solvent to take the wax off before I do this but because I've let it go quite thick it's not actually the end of the world. And again, I'm just trying to draw the eye a little bit away from it. And if you have got a bit of wax on this, just put a thin layer on, let it dry off, and then come back and put another layer on, and you'll be all right. And there we go, we'll let that dry off, and then we'll come back and do a bit more on that. I'll probably do this one here, because this is in, actually in the paint there. There we go, that's corner looking a lot better. You don't, again, as you walk by, you're not seeing a scrape there anymore. That's what we're looking for. Just to, you can go crazy. You need to know and stop, which I never do. There we go, that'll do. 
trying to resist the temptation to put new wiper blades on it now as well to tidy them up but another thing I could do is just literally get the dry brush while it's fairly dry and just do that just smartens it up a bit wipe blade is going to cost me what a tenner but it's a tenner I don't need to put in it if I don't need to isn't it there you go can't see the rust anymore that's bothering me so it's three o'clock now we got back with this what 11 o'clock it's sold 14.95 sold at full asking price Stuart solved the uh, airflow problem the pollen filter was completely clogged so we'll put a new pollen filter in but now we've tested it it's blowing absolutely fine um, so yeah it's sold just gonna do a safety check on it and then the lady's gonna come back and pick it up but yeah 14.95 that leaves us a profit of about I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a service on it as well oil oil filter air filter it's gonna make us about 600 pounds I think we'll double check um, but that's yeah so like I say it's sold in four hours I had a queue of people would have had it if she didn't have it as well so I told you guys one of my top five flips was Hyundai i10s and this is the reason why guys go out and grab them if you want to do your first flip go and find a deal on an i10 okay so let's go through the numbers on the uh, i10 bought it for 572 pounds transport was 105 pounds to bring the iGo back but i drove the i10 back so i split the cost between the two of the cars service kit was 25 pound 32 oil 15 pound insurance and marketing contribution 50 pounds as i've said in many of my videos i put 50 pound against each car until 300 pound for the month has been covered um then we have the valet from best buy uh, best car wash sorry what am i talking about best buy best car wash at 40 pounds um that means actually i can take that out because that's already been covered for this month uh let's take that out because that's already been covered for this month for the other cars that i sold so let's take that out um okay so yeah so we just got the car wash so we put the oil and filter on it the car wash um the transportation i didn't advertise on uh, amazon um, um what was wrong with me today i didn't advertise it on ebay or on auto trader so there's no advertising cost directly for it. it was just off facebook so my total cost was 704 pounds with a little bit of that uh, sale 1495 my margins 952 pound for the vat man so he has 153 pounds so total net profit is 636 pound 25 which as you all know Stuart will get 35 percent of that um so in my pocket you know we're talking the 400 odds something like that um so a nice quick flip uh will it need warranty work later on who knows i'll do an engine and gearbox warranty on that one for three months i'm not going to cover any more with 120,000 miles on it um so yeah nice quick flip nice little bit of cash in the pocket if you can make 400 pound a car flipping them that quick you'd be all right it does show you that some of the cheaper cars you can make a good margin on um, I'll probably only end up making four or five hundred pound at a day so I well, I've got five grand in. Um, so yeah, these cheap cars they can flip quick. Uh, I I did have an idea when I bought the i10. It might be a a, a a quick flip if I priced it keenly. I could have probably got a little bit more for it, but this has all happened. You know, like I say, total turnaround is probably about six hours in terms of driving up, picking it up, prepping it, selling it. So um, I bet six hours work for about four hundred pounds isn't bad if you can do it. It does show in the marketplace in my area cheap cars is the way to go doesn't it for sure but uh, they can be equally they can be hassle you've got to buy the right cheap cars and those Hyundai's as a general rule are pretty bulletproof so uh, yeah one owner from new car with 120,000 miles on it and I checked the previous MOTs it was a calculated get uh, calculated risk that one should we call it so as always guys thanks to him for watching I hope that this has been helpful to you um, You've seen enough of my other videos to know that money doesn't come that easily very often. So by all means, don't be giving up any day jobs and jumping straight into this on the basis of this flip. <laughs> all right, anyway, I better get off and watch the England game. Today from Mannheim, 2010. Um, 